how do I buy a truck and trailer in American Truck Simulator, how do I use skill points, and how do I expand my company? All those things will be answered in this video as I walk you through how to expand your profile in American Truck Simulator. Hello, my name is Prime, and in part 3 of my Getting Started with American Truck Simulator series, I will be walking you through how to expand your profile, or shall I say guide you on how to expand your profile. The beauty about American Truck Simulator is that the options are seemingly endless. If you haven't seen part 1 or 2, they will be up in the card above, as in those videos I develop a solid base for what we are finishing off here in part 3. In particular, part 2, where I talk about the career mode aspect in the creative or sandbox way, luckily, in this video, no matter if you're running a career or a creative save, or maybe you're running two different saves, one career and one creative, the topics in this video are most certainly still important. First on the list are skill points. Skill points are based on your levels in game, and they unlock extra features in terms of different deliveries and cargoes that you can complete. So if you have leveled up and have available skill points that you can select, you will see a number up in the top right hand corner of the skills icon. If you have not assigned any skill points to date, you will see a screen very similar to this. Starting off, we have hazardous cargoes, where within it we have six different levels. Six different levels apply for all of these six different attributes. If you want to learn about what these specific categories are, on the right hand side, a little info view shows up. This explains the bonuses and ultimately the details about whatever these skill points are. So as I selected hazardous cargo, you can see that there are many different classes of hazardous substances that you can choose to unlock. Now let's do a bit of a scenario here because this is one of the most important important things for getting started in ATS. When you level up for the first few times, I highly recommend adding skill points to long distance, high value, fragile cargo, or just in time delivery first. Unlocking longer deliveries are substantial in gaining more XP, a higher monetary value in the delivery, and also being able to explore more of the map. Now, if you're like me and you have all the skill points available because I've gone the creative route, simply select the category you want and hit the plus button until it fills up. Now, if you have multiple skill points available and you can see in the top right hand corner, maybe you haven't assigned certain skill points, you wanted to collect some and then do it all at once. You can do it whatever way you want. You can see that they go blue at first and you can add those to whatever amount. Maybe you want three in high value and one in fragile, say if you only had a few available and more in long distance, that is completely up to you. Hazardous cargo, you will notice there is no plus or minus button. For that, you want to hover over the class that you want to unlock and select it. Once you assign your skill points to whatever category you wish, go down to the bottom and hit apply. And just like that, you have completely changed the way that the job market will look, especially the cargo market and freight market whenever you get your own truck. Now, to get your own truck, go to the truck dealers tab, and then you will be greeted with the map. And depending on how many DLCs you have and where you are located on the map, you should see at least one dealership discovered. As we don't own our own truck, we can't actually travel to the dealer. So we have to visit the selected dealer through the menu. For those who want to know about buying online, you can't do that until you own three trucks. Let's go ahead and select the Western Star dealer and go down to visit selected dealer. And welcome to the ATS showroom. This is the dealer show room depending on which brand of truck you choose you'll see different models here and you have plenty of information on the right hand side let's start with some configurations down along the bottom you'll see that there are actually seven configurations here for the western star so if you hit the arrow going across they will start moving through the different types of trucks that are available from different sleeper configurations to completely different models all depending on what dealer you are at if you're in a career mode and you're buying a truck earlier on in your save, you're nowhere near level 30, you will have more limited options available to you, especially in terms of the models that you can choose as well. In American Truck Simulator, different chassis configurations become available as you move up in XP level. Now, if you're going a creative route, there is a very high chance that you have everything unlocked and you can select whatever truck you want, presuming you've done enough deliveries to have enough money for it. So within the dealership page, you have the option to select a certain model, doesn't matter what the model is, purchase it directly, or you can customize the configuration. 
Let's go ahead and customize just to show you how to do this. For those who've been around the channel for a little while, or maybe you're new to the channel, check out some of my ATS showcases videos, especially when I'm doing a mod showcase. That's a good way to help navigate this screen here, but I'll do a quick overview just so you don't get lost. The first tab is always the cabin type. So depending on the truck, you will have different options. These options cost different amounts of money, and you can see that along with the option. And down at the bottom, it shows what the original price of your configuration is, and if there's been any adjustments in what the new total is. On the right hand side, it gives more technical specs and gives a bit of an analysis to help you fine tune the truck for whether you're wanting to do more normal cargo, which can be more box trailer type deliveries, heavy cargoes, or if you want the truck to be more maneuverable and so on and so forth. Chassis tab is second, and that is where you can choose the lengths of the chassis. Third tab is the engine tab, and this is where you can select the horsepower and engine brand, depending if there are multiple brands. It just depends on the truck that you're configuring and select the engine that suits your needs. Once again, all of these are based off of your skill points. So if you don't have many skill points, there is no way you will be able to select this 600 horsepower engine. Fourth tab is the transmission tab. And similar to the engines, you have multiple different choices. Fifth tab is the interior options, or shall I say interior package. Really, there's a separate tab for interior accessories or options, but this is the overall package that you can find. Some trucks have more than others, but in this 57X, you can see that we are in the premium timber brown which changes the seat color but if i go to quarry gray you can see that changes tab number six is the colors this is where you can well select the color of your truck from different paint jobs and different paint skins depending if you have mods certain paint dlcs or other paint add-ons for any of the american truck simulator trucks there are always plenty of default colors both a metallic and more matte finish for you to choose from. Now, the tab that everyone likes to use is the exterior accessories tab. As the name entails, you can then choose the different options for your truck, really making it your own. Some of the trucks have more options than others. The newer trucks to ATS in particular generally have more options than the older ones. To select the options, click on the dot and you can choose from the selected options available, similar to the other tabs. So for example, the mirrors are set at Chrome currently I could go to paint, standard, or duty. The naming conventions across the board are quite standard, and like most things in life, the more expensive things generally are the higher quality ones. Finally, the interior accessories tab. Keep in mind that some of the dots may actually resemble something that are just outside the cab, but majority of the customization dots will affect the things in the interior. For example, you can choose the steering wheel. You can do different dash accessories as well, all different things to help customize your truck and make it your own. So if you're happy with your configuration, go ahead and hit confirm. You'll be then presented with your truck once again in the dealership page. And then if you are happy with it, go ahead and select purchase. It will give you a little screen. Thank you for purchasing your first truck from us. Please come again. It also says, please note all trucks bought here have regular insurance paid already. Select OK and we'll go to a cutscene. This is where the garage you already own comes in mighty handy. You can now actually use it, drive around the world for yourself, and explore American Truck Simulator for all it has to offer. So now that you own your own truck, the main thing you want to note is that down in the job market, you will see that you can now select freight market. And if you have your profile connected to a World of Trucks account, which is something I'll do in a future video on how to set up World of Trucks, you will see an external contracts as well. Freight market is for those who own your own truck, but you do not own your own trailer. So for us, in this case, you can see, depending on what cities you have selected, very similar to quick jobs, instead of trucks, you now see the trailer types. My prices are skewed because I still have the creative mode mod installed. So keep that in mind. For those in a career mode, this is where you have to be mindful of your rest, assuming that you have fatigue simulation on, you have to be more mindful of fuel and overall where you are in the map. Using the freight market is something that you will use most likely for quite a bit until you have enough money once again to purchase your own trailer, assuming that's the route you want to go. To purchase your own trailer, you want to go to the trailer purchase tab right beside the truck dealer tab, and this is where you'll be greeted with the trailer options screen. Currently, there are no dealers in American Truck Simulator for the trailers, so all the trailer purchasing has to be done through this menu. If you own some trailer DLCs, you can sort by brand on the left-hand side. For most of you, you will just see standard 
Raider trailers, similar to the trucks. Depending on your XP level, you will only be able to select certain trailer types. In fact, the trailer types that you can purchase will most likely be on the first screen, and as you continue to unlock them, they will move across. And also something that is very good to note, you will see generally something locked like this if you do not have enough XP or if you don't own a garage in those certain states. American Truck Simulator simulates the realistic laws in terms of the trailer lengths and axle configurations that are allowed within that region. The biggest culprits are the Rocky Mountain Double and the Triple Trailers within ATS. If you are buying your first trailer in a career save, I highly recommend you get a dry van or insulated trailer. And to be honest, if you can afford it, the insulated trailer is probably your best bet. A standard flatbed is also a very good option. This just depends on what kind of deliveries you want to take. So for today, let's go with the dry van trailer and you can once again either purchase directly the trailer option they have here or customize the configuration. As you may have noticed, it looks very similar to the truck side of things, except you have a few less tabs along the top. Starting off, we have the chain type, which you can, depending on the trailer, will have different options. As you can tell, some of the more complicated trailer configurations have red exclamation marks right beside them. That's a warning saying that you can only own that type of trailer if you have a garage in selected states. Second is the body type. Some trailers have different body types that you can choose from. For example, the box trailer has the dry van, the insulated, and the reefer. We'll stay with the dry van today, so it's a little bit more basic. Chassis type is where you can choose the length of the trailer and how many axles are available. You can go from a 28-foot trailer all the way up to a full-size 53-footer with four axles and one of them being steerable. Next up are the paint jobs, and similar to the trucks, there will be a handful of stock trailer options, and you can always do custom colors as well. Finally, we have the exterior accessories tab, as there are no interior accessories on a trailer, and you can find the dots around the trailer and they will give you different customization options that in many ways could help you match it to your truck. From the front of the trailer to the side running lights, the trailer configuration across the American Truck Simulator fleet is actually pretty good. Down in the bottom right hand corner, we have some very handy tools. If we want to see our truck with the trailer we're trying to configure, hit the button with the toggle all vehicles. That will bring in the current truck that we are driving. The next button is a camera reset button. Furthermore, we have a toggle light button. We have a full screen preview button. We have a switch camera mode button, which allows us to actually walk around. It's almost like a first person situation. It's a newer feature to ATS, but one that is really handy for getting up in a smaller area. And we also have a leave button as well. That looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and hit confirm. We're back at the main trailer purchase page and you will see your preview of your trailer and it will, should be selected. It will also show the price. With it selected, go ahead and select purchase. This is where you must select the garage where the trailer shall live. If you have garages across the map, feel free to put it wherever you want, especially if you're doing a creative mode. But if you're doing a career mode, odds are you're starting off with your one garage anyways. So just put it in your home garage. And unlike vehicles, I haven't hit a trailer limit yet at certain garages. So let's go ahead and select Reading and hit OK. There we go. We've gone ahead and purchased it and we can now access it in the trailer manager. So straight from this screen, you can see that there are many tabs along the bottom. It's kind of your handy ones that all relate to the different purchasing and management of your fleet. These can all be accessed down in the company section as well. Very quickly, let's check out truck manager. There's not much to do right now, but it will give us a list of our trucks that we do own and some different options revolving around it. It'll tell us where it's located, if we want to upgrade it, copy the configuration, sell it, or if you're currently not driving it, you can select this button and you can drive the truck. Moving to the trailer page, it is very, very similar to the truck page, except you're dealing with trailers. Now with the trailer, there's an extra tab here that's really important, and that is make private. For those who want to expand their company, for example, if you're doing a career mode, maybe if you're doing a creative mode, you'll do this as well. If you hire extra drivers and have other trucks in trailers, any trailer that you want to make sure you have reserved for yourself, select this button. You will see that it moves to private and no AI driver will be able to take that trailer with their truck. Other than that, the other settings are all the same as the trucks. So with all that said, let's go ahead and select use and that will actually connect our trailer to our truck. Or depending on where you are and where you chose to put the trailer, spawn it at that garage and you will have to go pick it up. It will say, do you really want to use that particular trailer? And we're going to go yes. Now that the trailer is attached to our truck, we can go down to the job market and see that cargo market is now available. Now you will see 
see that everything is in a cargo sense and no longer a trailer or a truck. Now let's talk about garage manager. Once again, looks very similar to your truck and trailer menu, but you have these different slots. To purchase more trucks and hire drivers, you must have multiple garage slots available. Every truck that you own will take up one spot whether you're driving it or not. So this is important for both career and creative mode players. As you're given a garage right off the start, it will be tiny. So it only has one garage spot and you can't do anything about it until you have enough money where you can select the upgrade button and you can upgrade your garage to give you two extra slots. So I'm going to go ahead and select yes. A beautiful cutscene will emerge and your truck is sitting in your brand new renovated garage, paved and all, and you have multiple garage bays for use. And if you want to do that one more time, you can unlock the final two by upgrading once again. Now you have a large truck headquarters outfitted with a gas station as well. The trucking headquarters is what anyone would aim for as your home base, especially. Now that we have multiple slots in our garage, let's go ahead and expand our company by buying another truck. So let's go ahead over to truck dealers. We'll go down to the Western Star dealer and visit that selected dealer. And for the sake of today, we'll just go ahead and take the stock Western Star and purchase that. Do you want to drive the new truck? We're going to go no, because this is just going to be our fleet configuration. You can customize this truck, whatever you want for your fleet or keep it very basic. And we're going to head and select a different garage slot and hit OK. That will be delivered and we're going to hit OK there and we can leave the dealership. Now, this is where we want to go to the recruitment agency, or you can leave it there, especially if you're doing a creative mode, that is completely up to you. But for most doing a career mode, you're going to want to put a driver in that truck. So you want to go hire a driver. Now, this is a problem because I actually haven't discovered a recruitment agency yet. And that is another question mark that you can find in your map when you're exploring American Truck Simulator. So let me do that quick and I'll be right back. All right, now that I've discovered a recruitment agency, let's go hire a driver and you'll be greeted with a list of potential candidates for you to hire. Now, the amount of candidates it's here will depend on how many recruitment agencies across the map you have unlocked. As I only have one, we only have one available candidate. It will give it the driver rating, different skill points they already have, and their asking wage and price per mile. Now, once again, salary here is way out of scale as I have a mod installed. Don't worry about that. Most of the drivers won't be asking for $250,000 a delivery plus $16 a mile. But for the sake of this video, because for whatever reason, I like spending a ton of money, we're going to hire Jacob here. He has one one skill point in long distance and one in high value cargo. So that's actually pretty good. Not a great driver rating, but he'll get there. So let's go hire a driver. Then we want to select the garage that Jacob's going to be out of. And we're going to select the truck we want him to drive. So as you can tell, the other Western Star 57X is down here, but there's no driver head associated with it. So we're going to select that and we're going to hit OK. So this is where you then go to the driver manager. This is where you can select your driver. You can change the training policy between balance, which is determining what skill points they go for first. I recommend adding long distance so they can go longer delivery and then changing it to balance so they fill out the other categories. Here you can show their log, what truck they're driving. If they have a trailer, if you have other trailers in your fleet that are not set to private, they can select those trailers and take cargo deliveries instead. You can relocate them and you can also dismiss them. Now the final way you can expand is by buying more garages. Some of the cities have garages that you can purchase and any garage will have a rest symbol and a green truck home looking symbol right by it. To purchase your first couple garages, you must do them in game. So for example, if I wanted to come down to Sacramento and buy the garage there, I'd have to drive to that garage and park on the green icon and accept the purchase of that garage. After doing that in a couple cities, you could then use the garage purchase menu in which it's very similar to the truck purchase menu where you can buy trucks online. And with that, you have all the fundamentals down on what you need to do to expand your American Truck Simulator save and play the game the way you want to. Whether you're going more hardcore in a career or you want to explore different areas of the map right off the bat with some of the nicest trucks and trailers in the game. Between these three getting started tutorials, you now have a great base to get started in American Truck Simulator and continue to grow your save. To continue to grow in terms of trucks, trailers and drivers, it's a simple rinse and repeat. When you fill up your garage, either expand it or if you can't expand it anymore, purchase a new one. Continue making deliveries, hire more drivers, and you are well on your way to being a trucking empire. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments. Keep in mind that I have a World of Trucks guide and an Ultimate Controls and Settings guide in the production pipeline that will hopefully be coming out sooner than later. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.